Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle, and a look at the characteristics of subprime mortgage loans. For FRM candidates, I continue to follow the case study by Adam Ashcraft. Traditional conforming loans meet the underwriting standards set by a government-sponsored enterprise or agency, that is Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, both of which in September were placed under U.S. government conservatorship. Loans that are larger than agency are called jumbo loans. Loans that do not meet the criteria of agency are called Alt-A or subprime. Alt-A borrowers have good credit, but aggressive underwriting is used. For example, no income documentation. Subprime borrowers have poor credit histories, including one of the following. A debt service to income ratio of greater than 50%. A FICO score, which is a personal credit score of less than 660 and in regard to payment history one of the following a least one 60-day delinquency in the last 24 months or two 30-day delinquencies in the last 12 months or a judgment or foreclosure in the prior 24 months or finally a bankruptcy in the last five years now that we've looked at the characteristics broadly of a subprime mortgage loan. I'd like to focus on a few characteristics in the subprime securitization in the case study. For the FRM candidate in particular, I'd like to focus on three tables in the case study. The first two refer to trends in the mortgage-backed security industry that are, in general, quite revealing. If we look at subprime loans, we have in Table 5, one row for each year running from 1999 to 2006. I'd like to highlight here that the combined loan-to-value ratio increased from less than 80% to over 85%. Next, full documentation loans decreased from 68% to 57%. And then what's really revealing here is the silent second liens. So these are second liens on the property that the original lender or originator is not aware of. It's, they're not told at the time of origination. In 1999, that was less than 1%. That increased to fully 27.5% in 2006. Next, Table 9, and this is still referring to the overall mortgage-backed security industry. We have data on subprime starting in 1999 to 2006 to reveal the trend, and some of this is also quite revealing. Adjustable rate mortgages increased from 51 to 81 percent. I'd like to remind this refers to mortgage loans in mortgage-backed security pools. And these are further just the subprime segment. Then we have these 2 and 28, 3 and 27, 5 and 25 arms. These are also called hybrid adjustable rate mortgages because there's a teaser rate that is fixed for 2 or 3 or 5 years. And then the rate becomes adjustable. These rates become quite expensive once the fixed teaser rate expires. We can see for the 2 and 28, for example, 31% of subprime originations in 1999 increases dramatically, more than doubles to 68.7%. Interest-only loans go from almost zero to 18.1%. These are loans where, uh, for an initial period, interest only and not principal is paid on the loan. And then also interesting, virtually no 40-year amortizations until 2006 when suddenly there are 26% of the subprime originations are 40-year amortizations. Finally, Table 15 is really only for FRM candidates because it refers to the specific performance of the motivating example in the case study, and that is not the mortgage-backed security industry in general, but rather the performance of a single securitization of about 4,000 subprime loans with a balance of less than a billion dollars. 
originated by New Century Financial in the second quarter of 2006, and were asked, what was this, what is the specific performance? And so table 15 gives us data as of the last month for this case study, which was August 2007, where we had 30 day delinquencies of 6.3% roughly, 60 day delinquency, 90 day delinquency, foreclosures of 7.6%, bankruptcy of almost 1%, Bank owned of 3.7% roughly, cumulative losses of one quarter of percent, and a conditional prepayment rate of 20% roughly, and such that the original remaining balance is was about 72%. So that's a summary just of the performance of our example for our case study. And this is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thank you for your time.